Now that we've taken a look at how vectors work in two space, we're ready to answer the question about how do vectors work in 3D, in three dimensions, in space. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at 3D graphing, because we do not have as much experience with 3D graphing as we do with 2D graphing. And we can think about 3D graphing as graphing in space, where it's kind of like the corner in a house, where one wall coming out becomes your x-axis. The other wall coming out becomes your y-axis, uh, intersecting with the floor, and then coming up vertically is what we will call the z-axis. And in this way, we end up with our x, y, z space. And you can also go negative y and negative x and negative z. So we get the origin is just kind of a fixed point out in space. And so then if we were asked to actually sketch a point, let's sketch the point. 1, 2, 3. This becomes quite a tricky task to do in two dimensions. But we'll do the best we can here. Uh, we'll have our z-axis, our y-axis, and the x-axis forming the corner of the house. And we can almost think about these as counting out on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, counting out on the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, and on the z-axis, 1, 2, 3. And it might be easier to kind of visualize where the point 1, 2, 3 is if we graph a three-dimensional box that sits in this corner, where the box has dimensions of 1 by 2 by 3. So the box is going to have a dimension of 1 down the x-axis, 2 across the y-axis, so we kind of end up with this shape. And then vertically, we're going to go up three units. And so you almost end up with this three-dimensional box. Sitting in the corner, and that front corner closest to us becomes the point one two, three, because it goes a distance of 1 down the x-axis, a distance of 2 down the y-axis, and then vertically up a distance of 3. And so that's kind of how we can sketch a point in three dimensions. And where we're ultimately going is from the origin, we're going to have a vector that goes out to that point diagonally across the box. But before we can get to that idea of vectors, which have direction and magnitude. To calculate the magnitude, we need to know how distance works in three dimensions. Now, in two dimensions, we're familiar with the Pythagorean theorem. So we could take the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared and take the square root to get that distance or the x distance squared plus the y distance squared. The square root of that equals the distance. We can extend that same logic out into three dimensions so that the distance is the square root of the x distance squared plus the y distance squared plus the z distance squared. So a really quick example of that would be to find the distance between the point 1, comma, negative 5, comma, 4, and the point 4, comma, negative 1, comma, negative 1. Well, if we look at our x's, the distance the x's travel from 1 to 4, that's a distance of 3 when we subtract them. When we look at our y's, the distance the y's travel from negative 5 to negative 1, that's a distance of 4. And the z's traveling from 4 to negative 1, they cover a distance of 5. 
when we subtract those points. So then using our distance formula, the distance between them is the square root of the x distance, 3 squared, plus the y distance squared, plus the z distance squared, which gives us the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 25, which is the square root of 50. And if we want to simplify that, that's 5 root 2. So distance, the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions works very much the same as it does in two dimensions. We just add the extra z squared to our distance formula. All right, that was a very brief introduction to graphing in 3D because our main interest is not graphing in 3D. Our main interest is in 3D vectors that go through the space. And basically, 3D vectors are very similar to 2D vectors. We just have to add the third component to get x, y, z. Or we could add a third unit vector, which is the vector k in our i, j, k vectors, where k is equal to the vector 0, 0, 1, giving us one unit in the z direction. So for example, we could have the vector v could be equal to 1, negative 2, 3. And in terms of i, j, k vectors, then that would be i minus 2, j plus 3, k. Or if I had the vector u equal to 0, 1, negative 2. Because 0 is the i vector, we don't really have an i, so we just have 1j minus 2k. And that tells us that this is a vector that goes from the origin diagonally to those points, either 1, negative 2, 3, or 0, 1, negative 2. Let's see if we can find a vector with initial point of 3, 8, 2, and terminal point of 2, negative 1, 3. Well, our vector. We know from two-dimensional vectors that we can take the terminal point and subtract the initial point, and that'll give us the distance that vector's traveling. So looking at the x component, 2 minus 3 gives us negative 1. Looking at the y component, negative 1 minus 8 gives us negative 9. And looking at the z components, 3 minus 2 is equal to a positive 1. Or if we prefer, we could say that's negative i minus 9j plus a single k. And this is that same vector. And what's nice about vectors in 3 space, once we're comfortable with vectors in 2 space, is that we can do all the same operations from those 2D vectors that we worked with in the prior video. So for example, if vector v is equal to negative 1, 4, 3, and vector w is equal to 2, comma, 0, comma, negative 3, we could do things like find 2v minus 3w. 
scalar multiplication and vector addition or subtraction. 2 and 3 are scalars. That's just 2 times the v vector of negative 1, 4, 3. And then a negative 3 times the vector w of 2, 0, negative 3. So when we multiply those scalars through, because multiplication comes first in order of operations, we get negative 2, 8, 6. Plus, let's take the negative through, negative 6, 0, 9, when those are multiplied through. And finally, vector addition adds those together to get negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8, comma, 8 plus 0, comma, 15. Or if we do those as ijks, we have negative 8i plus 8j plus 15k. Let's keep with these same two vectors, and let's find the magnitude of vector v. Well, magnitude is just the distance formula where we take the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared. It's that Pythagorean theorem we saw earlier. So vector v, negative 1 squared is 1, plus 4 squared is 16 plus 3 squared is 9. And we end up with the square root of 26 is the magnitude or size of vector v. And once we know the magnitude, we're ready to find a unit vector in the direction of v. And just like with two-dimensional vectors, to make a vector into a unit vector in the same direction, we scalar multiply by the reciprocal 1 over the square root of 26, the reciprocal of the magnitude, times the vector v, negative 1, 4, 3, which gives us the vector negative 1 over the square root of 26. 4 over the square root of 26, 3 over the square root of 26. Or if we prefer with i, j, k vectors, negative 1 over the square root of 26i plus 4 over the square root of 26j plus 3 over the square root of 26k. So as you can see, working with vectors in 3D is very similar to working with vectors in two dimensions. There's an extra component to work with, but we follow the exact same patterns. So I'll give you a chance to practice some of these on your own. Take a look at them, and we will answer any questions you have in class.